thought I'd give you a rundown on what I take for my day reckeys. Uh, I'm going to do a recon into a forest, try and find uh, solitary corners where one could bug out overnight. First off, uh, eye protection for scrambling through heavy uh, pine trees and forests, keep your eyes safe. Day pack, which is actually a very small, lightweight, uh, very tough uh, army quality tactical bag. I've attached an old radio pouch to mine, and the water bottle sits in here. The total weight is one pound, six, six kilos. So it's very light. It's half the weight of what you would take on a normal, you know, three-nighter uh, in your patrol pack. The only thing that I don't have with me today in here is my tarp and my sleeping system, and uh, that's about it, really. Apart from that, I've got everything I need. If I have to survive one night by accident, I could probably manage it. First off, uh, this is a useful strap to have because it keeps everything steady. It, it sits quite high up on your back as well, which is good. But also it's very convenient for slipping the mini tripod down here with the camera on it so you're ready for uh, takes. Uh, should you come across a scenic angle you don't want to miss, it's very quickly deployed. So we'll just take the, the pack off and let you see it in detail. Stand by. What I try to do uh, is not wear DPM in civil land because people get anxious to think you're either a poacher or pretending to be a soldier or you are a, an undercover soldier or some mercenary. You don't want to be militarized in a public place unless you're a proper soldier. I'm a civilian after all. But I like to blend in with nature for photography obviously and also not to be spotted by anybody so that, that's why I like to wear DPM. Uh, on a, a spring to, to late autumn this hard-wearing DPM uh, military jacket uh, really is perfect kit because it breathes slightly and it protects you from the wind and it gives you good protection against uh, branches and, and uh, also blends you in with the countryside. All you've got to wear is a t-shirt underneath and you're perfectly warm and it, it evaporates fairly quickly so when you get to the, your pitch or your camp or your recce uh, rest point um, you could take it off, change your dry vest and put it back on again. But I always carry with me my waterproofs anyway, so with a dry vest and windproof waterproofs, that's the, the jacket and the trousers, um, totally warm and protected against the elements, whatever the weather should turn out to be. Of course we all know that in Scotland you can get snow in July if you're unlucky. Uh, certainly I can remember snow in June where I used to live in southern Scotland and it was about that deep slushy snow bitterly cold. But you know, that's very unusual. Anyhow, here we go. So uh, I'll give, give you some detail and close-up on the kit that I take with me. Stand by. But first off is the Army Smock, which is a really great investment. I think I've paid 29 quid for this, and it's absolutely first-rate quality kit. Thick, non-rip, uh, breathable. And uh, the pockets are, as you know, uh, beautifully designed in double uh, folded big buttons you can open quickly, easily, with lots of uh, space for lightweight kit that you might need. I used to put my um, hat and gloves, wool hat and gloves in one, and whatever I need to use in the other in there as well in the other pocket. And that gives a kind of waistline for the belt so it doesn't slide down should you be taking a dog out with you attached to a, to a belt. It keeps it in position as well. Uh, now, um, the hood, I've taken the wire out of my hood. I, I, I did see that some people uh, keep the wire in the hood, but I found it too big. It's meant to go over a course of military helmet, uh, but the civilians, we don't need such a kit. So you just adapt it to suit you. I must, I must uh, singe off these uh, small threads, uh, but the, if you cut the first layer off, get rid of the wire, you still have the use of the cinch cord on the hood which is brilliant and the room to, room to put underneath a good hat uh, to keep the rain off your face if you wear spectacles. I try to fold my hat uh, cadet style, military, turn it inside out, fold the tip under, roll it in nice sort of clean and neat and then tie it three times around the button at the back and it becomes secure. So I just carry it with me in the vehicle or on the top of the the sack for the day and then deploy it when it's needed. Right, onto the sack. 
for detail. So as I've said already, it is only six kilograms. A day's supply of water, H2O. I use hot water from the tap uh, for filling it up because I know that doesn't go green if you uh, in your bottle and it lasts for well weeks and months uh, in the bottle without going green, which is fantastic. At the moment, we're all carrying uh, safety. I have hygiene here, which is uh, alcohol-based uh, anti-COVID antivirus spray. So I'll spray my hands regularly if I touch fences and gates. Waistband, just a standard military-style belt, which I've attached to the back of the sack, and, and uh, it's just great for hooking the dog lead on and uh, taking, uh, freeing up your hands. On the front, first and most important, I guess, is the first aid kit, which um, was a gift from one of my buddies. And uh, inside, I've put in it what I think I need: a mirror. Uh, for looking for ticks in awkward places, um, a tick remover kit, and uh, a few uh, safety pins for trying a bandage or whatever requirement. Quick and easy uh, elastoplasts for small cuts. You see, sometimes you cut yourself on wire fences accidentally and something to cleanse them with beforehand. Scissors for cutting dressings. And next section, um, painkillers and sanitation, I suppose I'd call it. So in here I have um, sterile uh, tea tree based uh, wipes. Uh, needle and thread for quick repairs if needed. Might even have to stitch up a wound if it's a bad one. Uh, survival bag, uh, full size foil. If you were to wear, you'd be totally unrecognizable by heat seeking devices from above. Painkillers, two types anti inflammatory and very powerful um, paracetamol, uh, 500 gram pills. You take two of those during an event and the pain will subside very quickly. So that's the medical uh, kit. I'll just so in the, the forward pouch, cooking kit, as you know, I quite like the cadet system for lightweight reconnaissance, although my favourite is always the BCB uh, setup. In here I've got a meal, fire lighting, food, coffee and cream uh, in different containers inside here, hot spices and garlic for spicing up the food. And if, you, if you're good at uh, picking up vegetation on the way, which is edible, you can chuck that in as well. I carry with me uh, the standard gel cubes, which I don't like very much. That's the last one I'll be using up. And I have a preference for the old hexi box. So I might carry six of those in here. And that's all contained in that small space. Putting that aside, the windshield homemade, uh, sprayed dark, quickly, easily bent, and wrapped round using the second pot as a, a cover for the top of the, the cook-up. So it's all efficient. Top end, a mobile phone in a waterproof bag and DVD camera, a digital camera and backup should I need it for lighting. And of course, legally allowed in Britain, uh, a pen knife, Swiss Army knife. But in here goes the valuable stuff, car keys, etc. Moving on, um, easily uh, removed, waterproofs, army, Gore-Tex, breathable, uh, hard wearing. Uh, in the middle section, I have nothing at the moment but a collapsible cup, you know, that's a cutting device. I think that's probably illegal carrying this, although if I was stopped by the police um, in a forest, uh, I would explain that I'm a bushcrafter and they could go to my channel to have that backed up. So I'd probably get a warning, but hopefully not a prison, a prison sentence. I'll be looking into the law there. I may have to give up my portable soul. Anyhow, staying within the law, protection against the elements, uh, protection against bugs falling down the back of your collar, chilly nights and days, always take my hammock, 
because you can set it up between, between trees and then change of clothes in a waterproof bag that's a fleece, second fleece and a t-shirt and then that's us everything that you need for a comfortable, safe and pleasant half day trip or day trip close-up of the, the tactical bag uh, quality is uh, first of all the additional part is the belt that I use which is standard sort of army uh, technology quick uh, click and attach off and on um, what else uh, right then the webbing is very very strong as you get on any piece of military kit and the clasps are amazingly robust and, and easy to, to operate uh, I really uh, do highly recommend this uh, tactical bag I think this one was under 40 quid and uh, okay it's not cheap 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 but it's ideal for a day trip you don't be carrying a big sack unnecessarily uh, the comfort uh, level is exceptional the zips are always close to the left side so my right hand even in the dark I know where I'm going I can open and close them the, the zips are extremely heavy duty and uh, great and first rate quality uh, so yeah the, the clasps are really easily released and very quick to cinch up so overall the comfort level on this uh, ruck is just fantastic I really really highly recommend it and of course space for your water bladder down the back here you could even put a poncho there if you didn't carry water um, I would say this is an excellent piece of kit for day trips and reconnaissance missions robust and tough quick to cinch fantastic